Hey guys, it's your boy Davion. Welcome to my channel. You already know we here with another Hot Topics video. Make sure you rate, comment, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned. So you guys already know why I've been absent and on delay. I've been transitioning out of the relationship from hell. A bitch been living in his last motherfucking day. So you know I had to get prayed up, had to get situated and proclamated. But a nigga is back spiritually aligned. I feel so fucking good and so fucking back to my normal self. I'm so happy to be getting back to you guys, to be getting back to work, to be getting back to everything that I had going on before this fucking massive eclipse of anti-matter just like, you know, swam across, you know, the, 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 the face of my life. You know, but you guys know that I have a Narcissist series coming out. So I do have a Narcissist video for you guys right after this one. So please make sure you stay tuned. And I also want to say, I really appreciate you guys who came out for that video. You guys really, uh, you know, touched me with your prayers and your wishes. A lot of you guys reached out to me on Facebook and reached out to me on Instagram. Just continuing to extend your love and your insight and your optimism. And I just am so grateful for the light and love you guys have just been, you know, directing towards me. I know it's one of the reasons why I'm standing tall right now and that I've been taking charge and feeling my power and feeling healed and getting through and pushing on and moving through. So I really just appreciate you guys. And I look forward to continuing to unpack romance and narcissism, covert and overt narcissism. I'm just, I've learned so fucking much. I feel like going through what I've been through exposed me to a whole nother realm, a whole nother fucking world. So I just feel like I came across things that I never knew existed and I've just made some new fucking discoveries that are going to change humanity. So we're going to get into all of that. But with that being said, you guys know that a nigga, you know, I ain't report on the last episode of the Queen Supreme's Court and we were graced by Miss Sophia herself. Now, for those of you who don't know Miss Sophia, I'm along with you. I don't know a lot about Miss Sophia other than uh, Tyler Perry allegedly stole his Medea act from Miss Sophia. That was hands down one of the easiest, funniest shows that uh, the Supreme Queen's Court has gave us you know, hands fucking down. The chemistry was absolutely amazing. Miss Sophia was fucking on it. I mean, the wittiness, the cleverness, the timing. I mean, I was thoroughly enjoyed. It was one of those episodes that I could have just watched over and over and over and over again. I mean, such a fantastic compliment um, to Miss Maddie. And I also just want to give a little love to Maddie and Funky Dineva and, um... You know, all the other guests who are on tour with uh, Madison because it's just always something special to see black people winning, but also to see people within my own community who live like I live, who have the same adversities and struggles that I have winning and to see Funky Dineva and to see T.S. Madison just out there making fucking money, uh, entertaining the world. And just, you know, on their shit, that shit is inspiring as a black LGBT person myself. And I just really appreciate the positive, uh, fun representation that uh, they both have brought to the table, especially by collaborating with one another. And I hope that just that this also acts as a staple that, you know, there's real beauty between the gay man and the trans woman. And I just love the ambiance. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I fucking love it. So light and love and kudos to Funky Dineva, to uh, T.S. Madison, to everybody who has been a part of the brand thus far. I know you guys are waiting for my debut. That shit is coming. As you see, a bitch is getting badder and badder and badder. There's a whole situation going on that I'm getting prepared for. A nigga been eating good oatmeal and drinking his water and you know I just been getting my fucking sexy on like and my birthday is fucking three days away bitch I'll be 30 fucking three 33 uh Thursday well it's two days away I'll be fucking 33 my nigga 33 like and I'm feeling and living good tens across the board to the Supreme Queen's Court thumbs up love you motherfuckers keep up the good work Maddie the Atlanta housewives 
premiered. Uh, you know, we have some special guests that are going to be debuting throughout the show later in the season. Uh, I more than likely will not be tuning into this season. For me, the Atlanta Housewives has been just really lackluster, like for the past. Uh, you know, few seasons. Merit to Medicine has offered me a great reference in terms of what for me is missing from Atlanta Housewives. I think why the ratings are low this season. And um, I know that Atlanta Housewives has a habit of picking up slowly. Like they ha they tend historically to start off very slow in their ratings and then they build kind of like a slow climax on up and through. Um, however though, I just feel like you know, it's not that these ladies don't have anything new to offer, but I just feel like Atlanta Housewives really lacks substance. And I think we didn't really realize that until Merit to Medicine really cranked up on, you know, issues that were a lot more prominent, that were a lot more relatable, and that really tucked at the heartstrings. Like over the past two seasons of Merit to Medicine, we've been watching people go through some real life shit. For me, Atlanta Housewives has been really filled with a lot of bickering and unnecessary back and forth and, you know, just immature ass grown women not liking each other for the dumbest shit and you know hazing the fuck out of each other and you know with Claudia and Nini's situation and then Nini and Porsche, Porsche issues being so fucking petty like Nini is damn 60 fucking years old you know feeling upset because a 20 year old cast member a 30 year old cast member is not necessarily making her feel like the BFF she wants to be in Portia's life like are these really are y'all really gonna make a season of this shit so I'm not surprised that ratings are fucking low um, I feel like they need to keep shit real. The shit Greg is going through, that's real. And they need to actually just, you know, find women who got real shit going on. Because, uh, these hoes are just rich and petty and ain't got nothing else to do but give us mediocre fucking TV. So, I feel like reality TV is transitioning now. And people are realizing that they want to be entertained, but they also want to be entertained with substance. They want whatever they're viewing. Uh, to be stimulating and to also be entertaining. So we're looking for both of those factors these days. But um, Atlanta Housewives, I won't be checking for it this season. I want to talk about this video that uh, Madison uh, gave commentary on on the Supreme Queen's Court where there was a black mom who was literally uh, putting her younger daughter on blast for being dirty. She was exposing a girl's panties. She was exposing how the girl keeps her personal bathroom, the shower. Um, you know, she was giving all of this information to us about how she don't want to wash, she don't want to brush her teeth, she don't want to wash between her legs. And I mean, the shit was shameful. And the mom was so fucking lit, just throwing her underage daughter out there for the world to see, thinking that humiliating her was going to teach her, you know, a lesson and make herself correct. This shit was, it went way too fucking far. It was really fucking unnecessary. And the thing that parents who want to, you know, discipline their kids online and then upload that shit to Facebook and upload that shit to Instagram and YouTube is you have to realize, like, we're living in a culture where people are literally taking their lives based upon, you know, public perception. People are literally killing themselves over uh, the embarrassment and the humiliation that 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 can happen you know when people are exposed and as a parent it was inconceivable for me to really relate to this parent's uh method of disciplining her child because if you have a child who's not washing their ass who's living in their filth who does not want to take care of themselves who's not being hygienic the first thing that would come to my mind is something is emotionally and psychologically uh, wrong here. And I would want to get my child some psychological help. Like, this is not like she's going to school and bullying other girls. This isn't like, you know, she's stealing from the local gas station. Your daughter is not interested in taking care of her physical body. That 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 lack of interest in, in in maintaining her hygienic maintenance would render me to believe 
there's some lack of self-love, some lack of self-worth, and that my daughter may be chronically fucking depressed. And as somebody who has suffered from depression and as somebody who also has relatives who suffer from mental illnesses, um, and speaking to some of my relatives who suffer from mental illnesses, who battled with depression and anxiety, one of the things that is really universal and common in the lives of people who are depressed is you don't want to wash your ass. You don't want to take care of yourself. And even when I used to go through these epic, epic um, episodes of depression as a teenager, I too didn't want to get up and wash. I didn't care about my fucking hygiene. I didn't give a fuck about living in my own filth. Like, bitch, I don't want to live. I don't care about life. I'm... You know, like, you don't care about those things. Not to mention that your daughter has to go off to school and your daughter has to go out in public and be around her neighborhood. Now, what do you expect your daughter to do if one of these little neighborhood hoes or one of these little bitches at her school decide that they want to, you know, start teasing her and throwing tampons at her and then she haul off and whip their motherfucking ass? Is she going to be wrong? Because she has a right to whip off an ass and now she got to deal with children who are even more immature and off-centered than her own fucking mother is and whip off in their ass just to make it through life every fucking day. It was just really fucking dumb. I would not have been surprised to hear that her daughter committed suicide two days later. Like, God forbid that happening, but I would not have been surprised because those are the type of things that will just drive somebody already struggling just off into the deeper end. Social media, black people, white people, Asian people, brown people, and people in general is not the fucking place to parent your fucking children. You had them hoes without a camera, so raise them motherfuckers without a camera. It is not any of our fucking business. Have some fucking parental integrity between you and that fucking child. Because if I had a mother who put me on blast like that, bitch, you, you could bet your mammy's ass that I would never confide in you and shit. I would never turn to you as my mother for shit. I wouldn't give a fuck if my asshole was falling out of my eye sockets, bitch. I would run to a little raggedy nigga in the neighborhood and ask him what's going on with my pussy and what's going on with my body and what's going on with my mind. And I would seek attention everywhere else aside from your ratchet raw ass. Get that shit together. Candy and Todd having another child. Now, I think this came up on the first episode of Atlanta Housewives where apparently uh, Candy has some eggs frozen and Todd got some sperm, you know, stored up somewhere. And they were thinking about having two more kids. And Riley, uh, Candy's oldest daughter, you know, said she didn't think that that was a good idea because they work so fucking much and they so fucking money hungry that... You know, where would you have time to really be active and personal in the lives of the kids that you're raising? Y'all have more shit going on today than y'all did when I was coming up. So, I feel like Riley has a fucking point. Now, Candy and Todd can do whatever the fuck they want to do. If you want to be Beyonce and Jay-Z and you want to hire surrogates and nannies and, you know, you want to do that whole now, you can do that. You got the coin to do it. But... I feel like we're living in a day and age, considering social media, considering the state of, of of our country, especially as Americans, that this is the time where parents need to be the most fucking active in their children's life. This is the time where y'all motherfuckers need to be home with your child because now you have to work more hours just to put bread and milk on the table and to provide a roof over your child's head. But now because of social media, most of these kids of this generation are being raised by their iPhones. They're being raised by 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 the internet, by Facebook, by YouTube. They're being raised by the virtual world. And um, I don't think that, that that's healthy. I think that the more that we acquire as a society, the more guided we need to be and the more guidance and wisdom we need or else we will become puppets to the advances that we're making as a fucking people. So I'm with Riley. Also, um, now I don't be trying to come for Riley like that, but I think Candy, you gotta take an honest look at your daughter. Like Riley is a great girl, very studious, extremely smart and humbled. But you can tell that Riley ass is a product of nurture and abandonment 
I mean, look at how Riley wears her motherfucking weaves, baby. Like, she be wearing them motherfuckers at a angle and then they be like half brushed weaves. And when I see black girls with like that weird, my grandma love me, but my real mama don't love me type weaves, I be like, Girl, like your like the weave is a cry out for help. That that baby done missed, you know, one too many hugs somewhere along the line from some damn body. So, uh, Candy, if you're not gonna take Riley's word seriously, at least take the condition of her weave seriously. Your baby's weave and hair extensions be telling us, baby, that that you spent one too many nights in the studio and you spent one too many nights on a tour bus. Now, and I be slow to really talk about Riley. People be like, don't talk about Riley, don't talk about Riley. Let me tell you something about Riley, honey. Riley is old enough to be critiqued. This girl is damn six foot four, five, six inches tall. And her ass is on reality TV and she riding around in a fifty-four trillion dollar damn car. So I think we can we can give Riley a little bit of the business at this point. You know, I think she's a wonderful girl, definitely very wise. And if I was Candy, I would be taking Riley's uh criticisms to fucking heart because Riley has has lived the life that will be provided to those babies who are still sperm. You know, she's, she's already lived it. So, so if you take your daughter's experience seriously, then consider that when it comes to considering whether you and Todd are in a position right now at this point in time in y'all life to really be there, you know, for this whole growing up process and to bring two kids in the world. Like, just really think about that shit. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is fucking voting. So, you guys know, uh, I think, what, only 11% of blacks voted um, in this election. And, you know, there's a lot of shit talked about people who don't vote, people who do vote. It's really divided down the middle. Like, there are people who just don't feel like voting is worth a good goddamn. And there are people who are like, bitch, you better get your ass out here and do what the fuck you got to do. Because the KKK is coming for that ass. Now, you know, I'm not a voter either. I'm not somebody who, who participates in votes. Um, I will bring myself to vote for local elections. But when it comes to, like, the major uh, presidential elections, like, I don't... That's a piss poor election and I know that that shit has nothing to do with us. Um, now in terms of your local senates and state governors and legislators, you know, those are the people who really um, are, you know, straightening out your roads and, 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 and replacing the abandoned houses in your neighborhoods and who are, you know, funding uh, different things going on within your actual state and city. So. I'm more privy to voting on in those elections, you know, but those other ones, it is what it is. So I'm not here for criticizing people for not fucking voting. I feel like America has done enough to black people to let black people know that uh, anything that they feel and want is just not fucking important to fucking them, just period. Which is why black people oftentimes have to end up uh, having white allies who share the same sentiments as them because black people alone, white people don't give a fuck about, not racist white America don't give a fuck about. And I feel like with everything that's been happening over the, over the past five years, I can understand why black people have become completely um, discouraged and unmotivated to participate in systems where it seems like only white people fucking benefit and only white people end up benefiting when half of these people get in office to begin with. Um, black people never ever really feel satisfied with who's in office. Even when black people was excited and proud to vote Obama into office, um, when Obama actually became president, black people still felt, black people didn't feel fully satisfied either because obviously somebody who's the president of the United States has to be the president for all people and not just a particular group of people. So, you know, it just seems like for black people, we just don't ever feel like we ever get what we want out of the deal. And if you keep making people feel that way because that's the way things keep ending up, then you can expect a, a large amount of that community to be disinterested in participating in fucking systems that like to make you feel like you're making a difference, but in fact, never really do. So I'm not mad at people who don't fucking vote, and I'm not mad at those who want to get out there and stand in three-hour lines to, you know, go vote for some hoe they ain't even informed about, um, just to feel like they done marched with Dr. King and made a fucking difference. I'm not mad at that either. Like, I also feel like, 
there's lots of ways to there's lots of ways to impact our communities and to impact our states. There's lots of ways um starting um nonprofit organizations of um, linking up with your local senator and you know trading off ideas and writing uh letters and proposals to get you know certain funding for like there's all type of ways to participate in bettering your fucking community other than voting another thing that i don't like about voting season is that there's lots of people who will come on YouTube and talk shit about, you know, what black people didn't do this time around with voting and what they could have fucking did. But I find it interesting that a lot of these motherfuckers who got mega large platforms don't even talk about who's running for office and who is the best candidate and don't even use their platforms at no point throughout the year to even prepare for voting when it happens in November and October. Like all year long, you done gave reviews for, you know, this TV show and this bullshit and I talked about this and I talked about that and then you're sitting here complaining that black people not only didn't vote, but they didn't even vote um, in unison for the right person. But you also didn't use your fucking platform to encourage voting before it was time to fucking vote and you never made one single fucking video one single fucking blog post about any of these individuals who black people maybe should have considering so i just find it to be interestingly hip hypocritical of a lot of people who have had such harsh criticisms of those who did not fucking vote a lot of you motherfuckers just have done a lot of this shit for fucking show and a lot of you people actually believe in the power of fucking voting and a lot of people also don't believe in the power of fucking voting i think at the end of the day if you voted fucking vote and if you are somebody who wants black people to participate you know that black people don't take time out of their lives to even privy themselves to the information behind the candidates who be up for governor and senator and this, that, and the third. But if you have a platform and you can use that to actually push information and to push data, then use that platform to do that to help black people have access to information that they normally wouldn't take time out of their lives to go research, but they are subscribed to you. They will tune into a video from you and use the power of your fucking privilege and your platform to make a goddamn difference instead of not doing that and capitalizing off of the lower aspects of humanity that's drawn to trash TV and trash reality TV. And then when something important comes up, you know, just using your platform to criticize those people who didn't fucking vote when you didn't do anything to inform those people either. And I also need us to also keep in mind that, you know, our ancestors voted for our, our ancestors died and protested for our right to fucking vote. A right to, to vote. My right to vote also means I have the right to not vote fucking vote if I don't want to participate in some of the liberties that my ancestors fought for and found to be important for them to strive for that's my fucking personal right they fought for me to have a right a right to make a decision to do or don't fucking do so I just think everybody should just shut the fuck up and get in where they fit in at and if you feel like black people should participate, then inform fucking black people before, you know, the day of, or don't say anything until the day after elections about election week, election month. You have 11 fucking months to prep people to vote for the right people, and you're not using your power or your privilege or your platform to do just that. So for those people who had a lot to say, fuck you and have several seats and find you a dick to suck. Next is this whole Cardi B, Nicki Minaj situation, like real fucking cute. Um, as you guys already have seen, Cardi B went slap ham in producing receipts to show that Nicki Minaj is a lying pathological sociopathic hoe who uh, deserved to have a shoe uh, thrown at her crown chakra. And Nicki Minaj clapped back, of course, on Cream Radio, you know, stating that, bitch, you can't write. I'm not pressed about your non-talented ass. I don't even really have a real issue with you like that, girl. Like, and it's just been obviously a big, big, big mess between Nicki and Cardi ever since Cardi B came into the game. Now, apparently, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B also decided to just squash the beef, wave the white flag. And I just want to tell both of you motherfuckers, 
thank you because the shit is exhausting cardi b you have already proven your point bitch that you are about this life and that you will touch this hoe if you have to and Nicki Minaj, you've proven your point that you know how to get under a bitch's skin and that whether you feel like a bitch is or isn't better than you, you do know how to get the best of your opponent and to rile they ass up into a frizzy. So, you know, kudos to the both of you hoes for being perfect antagonists toward each other. Um, and I hope this is the end of it. Nicki Minaj, I just feel like just go on about your musical business. Like, just leave it long, girl. Like, if Cardi B is indeed not a threat, keep her motherfucking name out your motherfucking mouth and do what the fuck a motherfucking legend does since that's what you claim to fucking do. Like, you're older than this girl. You're more seasoned than this girl than this girl and you've been in the industry longer than this girl so you look fucking stupid beefing with this girl because a lot of your issues with cardi b seem really to be more about the industry around cardi b than it is cardi b herself so you can take cardi b out of the equation and and just continue to talk about you know the errors and misconceptions and the corruption of the music industry in and of it fucking self than to actually be making Making Cardi B feel like she's personally responsible anytime that you don't get a fucking award or anytime you're not fucking praising hoes ain't sucking cherries off your fucking toes like instead of making her feel like that critique the system that makes you feel like that and that may be using Cardi B as a as a puppet and as a front runner, but Cardi B isn't responsible in and of her fucking self. So I'm just glad to see the shit is fucking over and I'm just tired of you rich ass, she by charade ass hoes, you know, with all this fucking money and fame and this is how y'all all spend y'all fucking time. Like fame really is a privilege and unfortunately it is not given to the wise. And the way you motherfuckers just, you know, <laughs> you motherfuckers have resources and platforms and money that could literally change fucking small cities and y'all sit up here and bicker and fight and act a goddamn donkey i mean it is a tribe i say um last but not least i want to talk about earl carter and um grandmama kelly i was watching the larry reed live show and he interviewed earl carter i think that's his name like the nigga looks like a warrus and you know, he's the pastor who was preaching the whole gays bleeding out of their butt sermon that uh, led Andrew Codwell to getting up, you know, saying he's delivered and he likes women's and all that type of foolishness. And uh, Larry just, you know, had a conversation around, you know, basically uh, the church and their stance on homosexuality and if the derogatory terminology like punk sissy and faggot are necessary especially in the house of god when talking about those who perceivably are struggling with homosexuality and of course you know like all dumbass left-brained uh aged black men earl carter you know defended you know his stance to say what the fuck he wants to say and of his, his justification for using this ungodly terminology uh, toward people who God wants in the house of God was that he wants to make gays so fucking uncomfortable that they're uncomfortable enough to actually change. And um, there's major fucking issues that I have with religion and the church and that's one of them is I find it interesting that all these you know, men and women who participate in organized religion call themselves men and women of God. You are men and women of your own egos and you disguise your ego with the name of God. It's interesting to me how this man was able to fully admit whether he realized it or not that he gets in the pulpit and that he uses God's platform to push his own biases and to push his own prejudices and to speak to people in a way that is not evident especially in the ministry of jesus christ now i also agree with larry that if you want to preach against homosexuality gays cannot force the church to accept them or to you know say that homosexuality is not a fucking sin if that's the set of christianity you in and that's the mindset you have fucking fucking fine but i don't understand 
how you are so ignorant to not understand the nuance. Like, gay people have been caught this shit by people who are not of God their whole life. And then they come to the house of God and have to hear the man or woman of God use the same bullying, derogatory, degraded ass language to try to save and inspire them to go live for that God. You are fucking stupid. Stupid. What type of cognitive dissonance and disconnection are we fucking talking about here? And this is why I can't fuck with religion and dogma on no fucking level because that shit is way too man-made. It's way too fucking fleshy. And I can't. I cannot. I will not. I do not. Um, and that interview was not a saving grace for the Christian church. If anything, it was just for the reinforcement that the church is falling apart and that it's time in the world is expiring rather fucking quickly and we see why that is. Um, Earl Carter is like the rest of them, the Kim Burrells and you know, this line of very demonic ass wickedness in high places disguising itself as Christians utilizing God's platform and God's, you know, naive, very sacrificial, compassionate, giving, charitable people who are giving their good hard earned money over to a system that is completely divided and doesn't mind uh, emulating white power. Because the church just reminds me of black overseers. Like, you motherfuckers don't want equality and you don't want God to love all people. What you really want to do is be white unto other black people. And you want to have that egoic control and manipulation and privilege over other human beings. And, you know, that's a whole video for a whole nother day. And maybe I'll come back and talk separately about homosexuality and the church in a separate video. Um, but I'm going to wrap this video up right here. Hope you guys enjoyed this hot topic. Obviously, comment below. And, you know, make sure you share, rate, comment, and all of that good jazz. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you guys soon.